Well, good evening, friends. My name is Joel Frieza with Kingdom Reformation Movement. I want to welcome you to our broadcast this evening, The Upper Room. And indeed, we're looking forward to sharing a very tremendous and encouraging word uh, that the Lord has placed on our heart. I know it's going to be a source of tremendous blessing and encouragement. So, Father, once again, we thank you for this privileged opportunity that you've given us to share your word from this platform. And Lord, we pray that as your word goes forth, it will go forth with power, with might, with accuracy. I thank you, Lord, that you're going to pierce the hearts of the hearers. And I thank you for all that you will accomplish in and through our lives in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Friends, I trust that you had a wonderful day in the presence of the Lord. And I trust that you are looking forward to hear what the Lord is going to say and speak into our hearts, into our lives uh, this evening. And as I said, the Lord has placed a tremendous word upon my heart. It's a specific word, a word for the moment. It's a prophetic word that comes even in the midst of your crisis and uncertainty. And I sense that the Lord is saying in the same way, that God has spoken through sundry times. He's spoken uh, through his servants throughout the, you know, the years, throughout the generations. Because God is always speaking. He's always speaking to us. The question is, are we listening to what God is saying? And God would have spoken to his people through many servants. And he is speaking to us even in this hour, even in the midst of all of the crisis, the chaos, the conflict that is engulfing our world. The voice of God is still able to penetrate and pierce all that is happening in and around us. And what is God saying to us? God is saying to you and I, that in spite of the present crisis, in spite of the challenges and the uncertainties that you are facing, God says to tell the people, I am taking you forward. God is taking us forward, even in the midst of challenges, even in the midst of trials, even in the midst of adversity, God says to tell you, that he is taking you forward, friends. God is taking us forward. He says, even as I was with the children of Israel. God says, even as I journeyed with them through the wilderness, he says, I am journeying with you. Even while you navigate your wilderness, God is with you. He's taking us forward. He says, I'm not just with you, but I am leading you as I led the children of Israel. God wants you to know that he is ordering your steps. He is leading you in a triumphant procession. He is guiding your steps. He is speaking. He is nudging. He is leading you. So God says, I am doing a new thing in your midst. I am about to open a door to a new season in your history, in your experience. And so today I want to talk to us on this important subject. The opening of a door to a new season. The opening of the door to a new season. And our text this evening is taken from that landmark passage in Isaiah chapter 43. We are going to read a few verses from Isaiah 43, reading from verse 18 
and it reads as follows God speaking to the people he says do not remember the former things nor consider the things of old behold I will do a new thing and now it shall spring forth shall you not know it I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert verse 22 but you have not called upon me O Jacob and you have been weary of me O Israel some of you you have grown weary of the Lord God is calling you out on that he says you have not brought me the sheep for your burnt offerings nor have you honored me with your sacrifices I have not caused you to serve with grain offerings, nor wearied you with incense. You have brought me no sweet cane with money, nor have you satisfied me with the fat of your sacrifices. But you have burdened me with your sins. You have wearied me with your iniquities. I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake. And I will not remember your sins. Put me in remembrance. Let us contend together. State your case that you may be acquitted. May the Lord bless the reading of his word to our hearing. The door to a new season is about to open up unto you, says the Lord. And this, as we said, it is a prophetic word that speaks directly to your future. It comes in direct contrast to your current experience, whether that experience is filled with crisis, challenge, or concern. God's word has the power to transform your situation and breathe new life into it. This is what he did for his servants in the past. This is what he says he is going to do in your life. But to participate and step through this door that God is about to open, this new season that God is opening up in your life, there are a few things that we need to do as revealed in this text. The first thing I want us to see from the text is that in order to step through this door to the new season that God has for us, you're going to have to forget the problems and the pains of the past. Yes, you need to forget the problems and the pains of the past. Verse 18 of the text says, God speaking, He says, Do not remember the former things nor consider the things of old. In other words, you have to forget the former things. You have to forget your hurts. You have to forget your pain. You have to forget your disappointments. Why? There are two reasons. Firstly, because what you focus on, what you give attention to, becomes your reality. This is why we read in Proverbs 23, 7. The writer says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. In other words, you become what you think about. You become what you give attention to. You attract into your life the things that you focus on. That's why it's important to not dwell, to not camp out by the problems of the past. Yes, we learn from the problems and the mistakes and the disappointments of the past. But you have to move on, friends. You cannot live there. You cannot camp out there. You have to fix your gaze on the future, on the things that God wants to put into your life. This is where you need to focus your gaze and your attention, not on the past, because you cannot change the past. But sad to say there are many this is where they get tripped up. They just can't let go of the past. They just can't dismiss the past and focus on the future. It's as though the past is like a, a weight that hangs around their neck 
that clings to us. And so many people, they just can't help themselves. They become slaves of the past to the point where they overthink and they become addicted to what happened in the past. Many times you hear people, all they can talk about is what happened so and so years ago and so and so time ago and what this one said and what this one did. No, you need to let go of that, friends. You need to forget the former things. This is the word of God coming to you. If you are to burst through into this new season, if you are to step through this door to this new season that God wants to dawn in your life, you're going to have to leave the past in the past. That is the only way, friends. If you are to move forward powerfully, and step through this door that God is opening up before you. You're going to have to stop looking back at the review mirror. Because what happens if you keep looking at the review mirror? You're going to crash. You're going to lose sight of where you're going. Because make no mistake, friends. We are not in a race where we are moving backwards. No, we are moving forwards. We're not moving back. And someone needs to know that God didn't call you in this journey of life to go back no you cannot go back you need to forget what is back there let go of it lay down at the feet of Jesus I'm not saying that we shouldn't learn from the past I'm not saying that we shouldn't reflect from time to time but you have to you know learn to move on that ought to be a temporary stop Yes, you stop, you learn, but then you move on. Why? Because the God that we serve is a dynamic God. He's always pushing us forward. He's always pushing us towards fresh moves of glory. This is why Paul, in writing to the second, in, the, in 2 Corinthians 2.14, he says, Thanks be to God who always leads us in a triumphant procession in Christ. God is leading us forward, not backward. And someone needs to know that you have to forget the pains and the problems of the past. I want you to notice what I said. They are pains and problems of your past, not your future. Those pains and problems, they took place in the past. So remember that those things, you cannot change them. They already took place. And so they are in the past. But God is saying to you, I am leading you forward. I am leading you into a new future. Into a future that is filled with possibilities. A future that is filled with potential. A future that is filled with purpose. Because in his presence, there is fullness of joy at his right hand. There are pleasures forevermore. So friends, you need to let go of the past. Keep the past in the past. Yes, God is taking you forward. The other reason why you need to forget the former things is because of what it says in the very next verse, verse 19 of the text. God says, Behold, I will do a new thing. This is a rhema word for you. Yes, God is saying to you. He did not just say it to the people in the past, but God is bringing this word alive into your experience, into your situation. And God is speaking to you even tonight. He says, behold, I will do a new thing in your life. God is shifting our focus, shifting our attention from the problems and the difficulties of the past towards a new and exciting future, a future that is filled with possibilities. He says, what's in the past is past. So leave it in the past because I am doing a new thing in your life. God is opening up a new door. God is going to be opening up new possibilities. This leads me to the second point. I want us to see from the text, if you are to be successful in navigating your way through this new season, 
that is dawning upon you. And what is the second point? Is that you have to focus on the new possibilities and potential of the future. Yes, focus on the new possibilities, the new potential of the future. We have to shift our focus from the problems and the pain of the past to the new season that is about to dawn on you. That's why verse 19, God says in a very clear and forceful way that I am doing a new thing. In other words, what God is saying, I am about to do something that has never been done before. I am about to do something radical, something different. Why? Because you are about to step into a brand new season. Yes. In the same way that seasons change in North America from autumn and then winter and then spring and then summer. And in our case, from dry to wet, God is saying in the same way that you can discern a change in the natural seasons, he says, I am going to give you signs. You are going to discern a change in your season. God says, gird up your loins. I am about to shift you into a new season. Your season is about to change. You are about to step through a door to a new season, says the Lord. God is saying to you, yes, even in the midst of your difficulties, God is saying that your season is about to change. And you may be saying, how will we know when the season is changing, when the season has changed? How will I be able to discern that? The first thing I want to say to you, is you need to remember that this God that I'm talking about is a God of covenant. He is a God who keeps his promises. He says to you, have I not said it? Will I not bring it to pass? God is not a man that he should lie. He's not the son of man that he needs to repent. God is able to bring it to pass. Because his word is powerful. It is quick. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. He says, my word will accomplish that which I've sent it to accomplish. But you may not be, you are not the only one who has skepticism, who may be, you know, wondering, is this real? Is this a pie in the sky? God had to respond to the same people people in the text had the same concerns and God had to respond by reminding them of his track record. This is what I like about God. He's a God who has a track record. He did not just, you know, appear on the scene overnight. No, God has a track record of performance, a track record of delivery and that beats all talk anytime. This God that I'm talking about, he has a track record and God gave the people in the text some very specific signs. He called to their remembrance two outstanding miracles that he did in the past. He says, just in case you don't believe me when I say that I'm about to do a new thing, he says, cast your minds back to the new thing that I did for your forefathers when they were journeying through the wilderness when they were faced with crisis and the first image that God projected onto the screen of their minds was the creation of an unlikely road in the wilderness God said do you remember when your ancestors were hemmed in on every side he was calling to their remembrance he says there were mountains on either side of them as they were making this trek from Egypt, crisscrossing across the wilderness to the land of promise. There were mountains on either side. And then to their rear, there was the army of Pharaoh. They heard the noise of the horses and the chariots. They could see the dust rising in the air. And they became concerned. They became afraid. Because what was in front of them it was the mighty Red Sea, the impassable, impenetrable, 
Red Sea. And so they were cornered. And I could imagine Pharaoh was licking his chops. He was saying, I've got them cornered. And that is what the enemy of your soul may be saying. You know, he may be saying, I've got you cornered. And you too, you may be saying, I feel cornered. I feel hemmed in. But what did God do on this occasion? How did God deliver his people? It says that God created a road where no road existed. On that occasion, God told Moses to tell the people, go forward. Yes. And Moses said to God, but God, go forward where? There are mountains on either side. The armies of Pharaoh are at the back and the Red Sea is in front of us. Where can we go forward? And I know many of you, you may be reacting the same way to this word. I've said that God said to tell you, go forward. And you may be wondering, go forward where? You may have your thoughts of skepticism. Go forward where? But you know, when Moses said this to God, God said to him, he said, Moses, what's that in your hand? What is in your hand, Moses? He said, I have a staff. To everyone else, that staff was just a useless piece of stick. But in the hands of Moses, that staff became the staff of God. You know why? Was it because the hand of Moses was special? Was it because the hand of Moses, you know, had awesome supernatural power? No. You know what made that staff special? It was because of the prophetic word that was released from the mouth of God, spoken into the life of Moses. God spoke to Moses and told him to stretch out that rod over the sea. And it was because of that word, that word brought to life, that staff, that word had power to bring about transformation, transform that situation from a dead end into a highway. And God is saying, I am the same God that spoke into the life of Moses, that spoke into the experience of Israel. I am the same God that is speaking to you. He's releasing a prophetic word to shift you out of crisis, shift you out of stagnation. He's shifting you into a new season of purpose, into a new season of potential. Why? Because all it takes to shift you out from where you are in that place of difficulty, in that place of crisis, is one word from God. The word of God has the power to change your situation and your circumstances. And God is saying to you, as he said to Moses, what do you have in your hands? That's the question that is coming to you even tonight. God is saying, what do you have in your hands? Because God wants you to know. God wants you to see that what you have in your hand is not insignificant. God wants you to see that what you have in your hand is enough. Because when God is with you, everything that you have, no matter how insignificant it may appear, it's enough. That's what God wants you to know. He says, do not despise the day of small beginnings. Do not despise the little that you may have in your hands. Do not despise the little bit of money you may have in that bank account. Do not despise the little food that you have in your house. Do not despise the little education you may have. Do not despise the little that you have. Because God says, when I am in it, it is more than enough. In the same way that God was able to transform a seemingly useless piece of stick into a, a powerful rod of God that split apart the Red Sea. God is saying, I can transform the little that you have and make it do miracles. I 
could take the little that you have and cause it to do miracles that will open the doors that will split apart your red sea that will split apart your mountain why because the word of god has the power to change your life the word of god has the power to change your situation all we have to do is heed the word of god and things are going to change things are going to transform god is saying god is saying that i can take the little that you have and use it to unlock and open up that highway that is you know unseen to you right now god is saying i can make a way where there seems to be no way i could split your red sea in half i could split that mountain in half and create a new pathway that where there was no pathway at all at all god is saying doesn't matter what is standing in your way right now whether it's doubt whether it's disappointment whether it's you know unbelief whatever is standing in your way god is saying i can use the little that you have and open up a highway where there's no way at all, at all. That is what God is saying to you. God is saying, if I can transform the Red Sea from a dead end into a highway, he says, there's nothing that is too difficult. There's nothing that is too hard for me to do. God wants us to know that. God is saying, I'm opening up a door in your life, a door to a new season told Moses said Moses take that rod take that rod and stretch it out over the Red Sea as soon as Moses stretched out the rod over the Red Sea man those waters there was an explosion a, a strong east wind started to blow and caused the waters to split apart all of that happened because Moses dared to obey the voice of God what are you doing, friends? Are you obeying the voice of God? Are you doing what God is telling you to do? God says, I want to do something awesome, something supernatural in your life. But you are going to have to partner with me. You are going to have to cooperate with me. You are going to have to use the little that is in your hand. God is saying, I can do awesome things things that will totally amaze you god is saying all you have to do is heed my word as strange as my word may appear to you obey my word and supernatural things will begin to unfold in your midst that's why god is saying to you forget the former things focus on the new things i am releasing a new word into your life into experience i'm doing something new in your life god is saying focus on my word focus on this new season that is about to dawn in your life but just in case you still have doubts god squeezed in another image on the slide that he was presenting to them he says i did not just create a new road in the wilderness but i also created a river a new river in the desert could you imagine that he created not just a highway in the, in the wilderness but he created a river could you imagine that this god that we serve he cannot be boxed in he cannot be hemmed in he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or imagine and there was this one particular day that the people of israel they had traveled a long distance and they came to this place called Rephidim. And at Rephidim, they complained. This is one thing that they were experts at doing. They complained and they complained because there was no water for them to drink. And again, the word of God came to Moses. The word of God came to Moses and told him, strike the rock. What you have to understand here is that Moses was not leading 10 people. Moses was not leading 10,000 people. 
Moses was not leading a hundred thousand people. No, he was leading a crowd of more than two million people. Yes, more than two million people. Moses was leading. So we're not talking. We're not talking now about a handful of people. And so I want you to visualize what took place here when God told Moses to strike that rock and he struck the rock all of a sudden there was an explosion in that rock and water came gushing out that's why God said it was a river because you're talking here now about providing water for two million people to drink it was a river in the middle of the desert I can imagine all of a sudden it looked as though they were standing in front of Niagara Falls in the middle of the desert. This is the, you know, this is the power of the Word of God. When you obey, when you cooperate with the Word of God, supernatural things will begin to happen in your life. When Moses obeyed the voice of God, he struck the rock. Out of that rock came a river. It started to flow right there in the midst of the desert god is saying if i did this for these people who were on the left hand side of the cross they were part of an inferior covenant he says how much more will i not do these things and greater for you who are on the right hand side of the cross you are part of a better covenant which is established on better promises Additionally, the Lord also says, He says, I change not. He says, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. God is saying to you that I will astound you with what I will do in your future. And so God is challenging you this evening, friends, to make room in your minds. God says, make room in your thinking by forgetting the failures and the frustrations of your past. Let go of it. Forget the pain of the past. The third and final thing that God is saying is that if we are to step into this new season, not only do you have to forget the former things, not only do you have to focus on the new things, but God is saying you need to rekindle your fire and faithfulness for Him. Many of you, you have grown cold. You have allowed your flame. You have allowed your fire of worship, of sacrifice to grow cold. And God is saying to you, if you are to step in to this new season that I'm opening up in your life, you're going to have to rekindle the fire of your faithfulness, the fire of your devotion. Did you notice what the word of God said in verse 22 of the text? God had chastised the people for their lack of fidelity, their lack of faithfulness. Listen to what he said to them. He says, but you, you have not called upon me, O Jacob, and you have been wary of me, O Israel. You have not brought me the sheep for burnt offerings, nor have you honored me with your sacrifices. So God was calling them out. For their lack of fidelity, their lack of faithfulness, because of their present circumstances, because of the distress that they were experiencing, and the fact that the distress had prolonged longer than they anticipated, they grew weary, they became frustrated, not just with the situation, but they actually grew weary and frustrated with the Lord Himself. And some of you, that is exactly what is happening. You have grown weary, not just with the situation, but you have grown weary with God himself. And God is calling you out on it. God is saying there are many of you, because of the situation that you are facing, you are blaming God. You are holding back your worship. You are holding back your sacrifices. And God is putting his finger on the issues. This is what was happening to the people because of their circumstances. They faltered in their worship and sacrifice. 
because they became weary with the Lord. It seemed as though the Lord had abandoned them. That is how it seemed to them. It seemed like when they cried out to the Lord that there was only this deafening silence. Many of you, you may be right there. It seems like God has abandoned you. It seems as though God is not answering you. And I want to say to you this evening, friends, that things are not always what they seem to be. You may be in that similar situation as the people in the text. You've cried out for change. You've cried out for something new. You've cried out for deliverance. And yet, despite your cries, it seems, notice what I'm saying, it seems like nothing has been forthcoming. It seems like there's this divine silence and inaction. And as a result, you have allowed that to influence the quality of your worship. You've grown weary of God. You no longer have a desire to pray. You no longer have a desire to worship God that you know you should be doing. And I want to say to you, do not make the mistake of interpreting what appears to be divine silence or divine inactivity for divine denial. Do not make that mistake. Why? Because God said something to us. And remember I said that God is a God of integrity. He's a God who keeps his promises. He is a God of covenant. What did God say to us? He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. God promises to be a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. So if those words are true, if God is, you know, if God said that he will never leave you, if that is true, and we know that it's impossible for God to lie, it means that when you are at your lowest point, when you feel like you are alone, when you feel like you are abandoned, it means that God is right there with you, friends. He has not abandoned you. It may feel like he has abandoned you, but God is saying to you tonight that I have not abandoned you. I've never left your side. God is saying to you, I've been always right there with you. through take until... God is right there. Someone needs to know that tonight. You may feel like you are all alone. You may feel like God is not hearing you. But God is a God of integrity. He says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. So it means that, that God is right there with you. He's with you. He's, a, he's right there, even in the midst of the crisis. And although you may not be able to trace God, I want to challenge you. Trust God. Trust God. Take him at his word. Trust God in spite of what you see, in spite of what you experience. Trust God even when it seems like he's not answering your prayer. I challenge you. Trust God. Why? Because God is at work in the background. Sometimes God is doing things that you have no idea about. Sometimes God is sparing us from situations and circumstances that we have no knowledge of. He's right there. He's working behind the scenes. And when it will be all be revealed, you will be utterly amazed. This is exactly what God did in the life of Habakkuk. When Habakkuk's community was being overrun with injustice and iniquity, there came a point in time when he, he, he got fed up. He called out to God. He said, violence, violence. He complained. Because it seemed as though God was silent. It seemed as though God was inactive. In response, God said to Habakkuk, He says, I want you to look among the nations and watch. God says, be utterly astounded. I will do a work in your days that you will not believe though it were told you and God is saying the same thing to you this evening 
He says, watch and see what I will do. He says, shall you not know it? He says, it will spring forth. I will show you signs. I will reveal to you what I will do, even as I reveal to the children of Israel in the wilderness. God is saying to you, watch and see what I will do. And so I'm saying to you, friends, do not interpret divine silence to mean divine denial. Do not interpret divine delay for divine denial or divine inactivity because God says I am doing a mighty work in your life I am opening a door to a new season to catapult you into your destiny and so God is saying renew rekindle your faithfulness rekindle your worship rekindle the fires of your worship do not allow your challenge do not allow your crisis to stifle your worship. Do not allow your disappointment to imprison and hold captive your worship. This is what Job did. He says, though he slay me, yet will I praise him. Do not allow your circumstances to hold your praise and worship captive because God is good in spite of what you are facing. And what you are facing may not feel good, but it doesn't change the fact that God is still good. He's good all the time. And so he's worthy of your praise. He's worthy of your worship. And God is challenging you. He's saying, let today be a new day in your life. Let today be the beginning of a new season of praise and worship. God says, emancipate yourself from mental and emotional slavery. Do not allow anything or anyone to hinder your worship. Allow your worship to come forth. God says as you do, you're going to see a new door opening up before you. A door to a new season of purpose and possibility. And as I conclude this evening, I want you to remember that this God that we serve he is a covenant-keeping God. He is a God who keeps His promises. He promised never to leave us nor forsake us. And so I want to encourage you that as you are journeying through life, know that God is with you each and every step of the way, even when your way gets bumpy, even when you encounter dead ends. God is right there with you. And today, God is saying to you that he's about to open a new door in your journey, a door to a new season. He says you will know it because I will give you signs. He says it's going to spring forth just like the highway that I created in the wilderness. It will spring forth just like the waters that gush out of the rock. But in order for you to step in to this new season, God says there are at least three things you need to do. Firstly, you need to forget the problems and the pains of the past. Why? Because they are in your past. God is saying, I want you to forge ahead to the new season that I have in store for you. God is saying, forget the pain of the past. Secondly, he says, you need to focus on this new season. Focus on the new possibilities. Focus on the new things that I'm bringing into your life. God is saying, I'm bringing a new season of purpose and possibility into your life. So it's time for you to shift your focus from the review mirror to the windscreen of life. Because what you give attention to becomes your reality. Third and finally, God says, Rekindle the fires of your faithfulness. Rekindle the fires of your worship. Because God inhabits the praise and worship of his people. It's your worship and your praise that will enable you to weather the storms and press through when it seems like things are not working out. Finally, God says to you, 
do not misinterpret divine silence to mean divine denial do not misinterpret divine delay to mean divine inactivity because God says to you I'm doing an awesome work in your life I'm working in the background I will do something that will utterly amaze you and he says you will know it because I'm going to open up a door to a new season a door where no door exists amen and amen hallelujah mighty God we give God all of the praise all of the honor friends he is worthy to be praised he is worthy to receive honor he's worthy to receive glory so father thank you for this word that came forth today directly from your throne of grace a word that is able to lift those who are downcast and depressed a word that is able to birth new hope new life new energy new passion and so father i pray that you will help your people to forget the former things to forget the hurts and the pains of the past help your people lord to focus on the new things the new the new reality that you're bringing into their lives and lord help us to rekindle the fires of our worship lord that we will not grow cold in our worship that but we will worship you in spirit and in truth we will worship you with our all we will worship you with zeal and passion and lord i thank you that as we do these things lord you are going to open up a door where no door exists and so father we give you all the praise all the honor and all the glory in the powerful name of jesus christ friends i trust that you were blessed and encouraged by this word from the lord and until i see you in our next broadcast i want to challenge you to plant your feet on the ground to look up because your redemption draw it nigh and of course always remember that the kingdom of god is at hand my name is joel fraser the kingdom reformation movement have a wonderful evening friends god bless you